Hi guys, uh, Wednesday the 5th of June, just coming up to 8 o'clock here in London. Hope everyone has had a, a good good rest and ready for the day ahead. The calendar certainly looks like it should be a promising one. And after yesterday's moves in the market, which we'll come on to shortly, uh, could well be uh, another decent day for trading after perhaps the, the Monday was a bit more lacklustre. Price yesterday was moving uh, in quite a nice fashion. Helped mainly by the guy on my right. Jerome Powell, uh, you can see the headline there, uh, ready to act if trade wars hit economy. Uh, the guy must be going to sleep each night just praying that a trade war gets done so he doesn't have to cut rates, which by all accounts is pretty much priced in uh, to these markets. But the fact that he was uh, coming out yesterday and all but confirming uh, they're going to do so if, if the, the current state of play remains the same. Uh, the markets loved it and we'll have a quick look over just yesterday's uh, trading opportunities if you like now we'll have a look at the the s p and, and stocks have their best day in five months uh, in the us and you can see what this looks like on a chart starting uh, the last couple of days the failure to make that double bottom and, and you know you've got to give it credit where credit is due uh, yesterday's briefing anthony did mention uh, how we thought stocks would recover, how we wouldn't get a, a similar down day for the FANG stocks as well and, and price duly pushed on. Um, we can see here just stump coming under a bit of pressure this morning to what was the, the low of the day. I wouldn't get too excited about this just yet. Obviously you've got the, the cash open uh, for, the, for the DAX in five minutes so it'll be worth keeping a close eye on that. But stocks really uh, pushing through every obstacle with, with ease. Obviously, the cash open comes around, and this was a really nice trade opportunity. Uh, I saw a couple of people got in the push above the, the previous high that came back down around about 3 o'clock or just uh, before to find support for that push higher. And uh, I did see a few people were still in the, the, the market when we pushed to 2800, which would obviously been late last night. Uh, some really good trades there. Uh, with the, the dovish Fed uh, from yesterday, obviously gold has continued its journey higher this morning, obviously helped by perhaps a bit of risk off into the market, but the, 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 the dollar has of course weakened over the, the period of, of a few days and gold has really been on some sort of journey uh, as we pushed higher. A market that had been struggling for a while. Uh, Pound also had a, a decent end to the day yesterday. Uh, seems like a bit of a relief from that 26 failed test at that trend line and multi uh, week year uh, low as well. Uh, although we are starting to see a tiny bit of a recovery here in, in the dollar, and we do have a, a performer of, uh, of Fed speakers later, so promises again to be an interesting day for speaker wise, which is what moved the market yesterday. We did have some data out, of course. Uh, but in the term, in the in the way of uh, scheduled releases, data-wise, it wasn't that that moved the market. We did have some comments from uh, Fed's Evans as well, which at the time were, if anything, deemed hawkish from the market. And the euro certainly came back down to the lower part of the day. And you can see here was uh, almost touching the pivot before Powell did come out. The euro, I guess, was stuck within a bit of a range yesterday. Uh, is really the, the stock markets that uh, loved Powell's comments the most. Uh, so I'll just be keeping an eye going into the morning what the DAX is doing now back towards yesterday's higher point uh, that we reached around 2, two o'clock, 1.45. So be keeping uh, a close eye on, on what happens in a, in a few moments. Back to the, the headlines. Uh, obviously Jerome Powell, the, the main mover, but also yesterday what we had, of course, uh, was the, the Trump and May meeting. I don't know if anyone watched this. It was, it was quite fun to to watch the uh, the two of them just enjoying it actually and uh, having a laugh and joke. A lot different to uh, if you remember the the, the Sun headlines from uh, last time Trump was over, where he basically threw May under the bus. There was none of that. No talking of uh, any of the, the touchy subjects, uh, Iran or Huawei. It uh, really was you know, quite nice, if you like. And of course, Trump came out with a, a big promise, promising a phenomenal post-Brexit uh, trade deal, uh, which you know, is 
optimistic to hope for. Uh, the time duration on, on this, as we know, could be could be incredibly long. Uh, so I wouldn't really get too carried away. But the pound, I guess you could argue, uh, liked it a touch. It's you know positive uh, for the pound outlook, but really not uh, something to get too carried away with at the moment. Uh, evidently, the, the leadership race is going to drive the. Uh, the pound shorter term and what happens from there whether we get a deal or not then we can start talking about these things uh, in a bit more future in in the future i, I should say but trump uh, his comments uh, on the on on britain itself it's the greatest alliance the world has ever known uh, all of these comments obviously helping the sentiment just uh, increase a, a touch uh, a trade deal uh, with the US, of course, is, is probably some way off and then would even be determined by how the, the UK split the, the EU. Uh, as May's planned envisioned, if they do stay close to the EU, then uh, uh, in order to negotiate a free trade uh, deal with Washington is going to be incredibly unlikely. So be keeping close tabs on what happens come October the 31st or uh, beyond. Uh, do we leave with a, a deal or a no deal or does it all get pushed back and, and so on? So it's something just to put on the, the back burner, remembering these comments and then see what happens in the future. As we know, Trump can go back on his word instantly. Uh, yesterday was talking about how everything is on the table, uh, including the NHS, and then did a, an interview with Good Morning Britain, taking it off the table uh, effectively. So. Yeah, I wouldn't get too carried away for, for now. If we talk about uh, trade negotiations that the US is currently doing, the, the one with, with Canada and Mexico, which was simply just amending uh, an existing pact, took over a year. And still the deal's uh, fate remains unclear amid objections in Congress. So this is, yes, a tiny bit of a positive, but not something that I would be coming in today and just buying the pound. Uh, as simply as that. If we do have a look at the, the pound yesterday, of course, uh, the, the dovish Fed helped push us higher. Uh, but, you know, if you look at just yesterday's price action here, you couldn't really argue that much of it was down to this meeting. So, in summary, good news for the future, if true, uh, but I wouldn't be getting too carried away. And just having a look at this trend line from yesterday, actually that's quite nice. Coming up to test that now previous high of yesterday 127 handle technically really nice here for for the pound is the dollar going to keep strengthening or is this level going to hold would be one to, to keep a close eye on for now with the uh the leadership race uh, i've just seen a, a really good tweet here um from adam linton uh, one of the guys at, at ranscork and just about the process that it has to go down so any MP wanting to be leader requires eight supporters to be in the running. So this is their way of getting rid of the, the dead wood, effectively, uh, to sound harsh, I guess. Uh, nominations will be open and closed in June the 10th. So five more days for, for the guys to, to get their names in. Cleverly uh, withdrew his nomination yesterday. It's the first one I, I've seen uh, to, to do that. Uh, field will be re reduced to two in a series of votes. Those votes taking place on the 13th, the 18th, the 19th and the 20th. And then candidates will need to receive at least 16 votes to survive the first round, 32 to survive the second. The candidate with the fewest votes will be excluded in each round uh, as we get down to the nitty gritty. And of course this could, could take a while, but Conservatives grassroots members will have the week beginning this 22nd of June, so 17 days from now, to the week beginning the 22nd of July to choose the winner out of these two in a postal ballot. Now, if it was to completely drag on and, and so on, which of course it could, worth noting that of course in August, uh, you have the recess period of Europe away. So even if we do get a, a new leader in, um, by then is much going to get done in August I very much doubt it which leaves us September and October where there's political things going on as well so to get a deal a change in a deal by then I think is is quite unlikely um, and then you know even if we do in Parliament agree a new deal are the EU going to accept that I think uh, there's still some weight to be had for the pound and Boris is, is reaffirming his position as favourite. Obviously, the court order uh, weighed on his odds a bit. Uh, but if he is to come in, and, and I think Gove is still second favourite, 
I, th I do believe we will start to see just a bit more of a down move uh, in pound. Uh, maybe not necessarily against the dollar right now, as of course you do have uh, the, the dovish Fed. But if we were to take a look at a market like the Euro pound, then let me just bring that into position here on this longer term chart. You can see yesterday was the, you know, the biggest down day, if you like, the pound strength that we've had since well, 3rd of May, so a really strong push higher and you know, I'll be keeping a close eye on, on what happens around here price action wise, incredibly important going back to the 28th of November that we had the breakthrough there of course beginning of the year to find resistance in February and we're now tracking around that point so I don't think the pound is out of the woods um, certainly not against other asset pairs, maybe for the dollar short term uh, but in times of uncertainty you can see people buying the dollar back so I just wouldn't be, I'd be just slightly careful uh, there. Going back to the uh, Jerome Powell comments. Now this was arguably the best opportunity in hindsight uh, to, to buy stocks. I've, but you know, if we do, you know, we'll have a look back at the, the S&P in a moment. It was already going higher. It recovered quite a bit. Uh, if, if someone had, had said to you beginning of the week on Tuesday, you know, the FANG stocks are going to be down X, Y, and Z percentage, you're thinking, wow, what an opportunity to get in. What an opportunity. And, and effectively, that is, is what happened. Uh, those comments from, from Powell speaking at a Chicago press conference, um, signaling the central bank stood ready to cut interest rates, saying it would act as appropriate to sustain the expansion amid the economic impact of escalating trade wars. So I mentioned he's, he's going to bed praying for a, uh, a trade deal to be uh, agreed and, and that's still very much the, the case. We do not know how or when these issues will be resolved, he said, uh, in remarks that helped stoke a powerful rally on Wall Street. And not just in Wall Street uh, as well, you can see, if I just bring in the, the Nikkei uh, to uh, picture, just because I, I can see it out of the corner of my eye. Uh, you can see, and again, you could argue that was the S&P or the Nasdaq or the Dow or the DAX, a strong rally and just coming under a bit of pressure this morning. So stocks loving life yesterday, understandably, but can that continue uh, or not today remains to uh, to be seen. Uh, we are closely, and he went on to say, we are closely monitoring the impact of these developments for the US uh, economic outlook. Um, and then referring to, to tariffs, which have been, uh, in the past month been raised on imports from China and threatened on imports of Mexico. He said the Fed would act as appropriate to sustain the expansion with a strong labour market and inflation near our symmetric 2% objective. Uh, whether that or not will, will happen or not remains to be seen. And, and just on the, uh, the trade deal and or potential trade deal with uh, the UK and uh, the US, it's worth just having a, a quick look over here at the, the current uh, state of play with Britain. So Britain sending half of its goods exports to the EU but only 16% to the US. So Trump saying yesterday that it could nearly double or triple uh, which really probably means less than that of course um, but at the you know their, their current trade deal but at the moment you just you can see the importance of the, the EU and that and I think any leader coming in even with these promises from our greatest ally uh, needs to be a bit sensible early on uh, but then you know on the flip side you'll have plenty of people saying L listen let's get out with no deal start afresh yes it's going to be you know a struggle for the for the coming years but the potential is you know so high in the sky and we can get this massive new trade deal which triples with the US well it sounds all good on paper right whether it's realistic or not um, all of course remains to, to be seen also yesterday uh, overnight uh, let's have a, a quick look at uh, WTI on the charts before coming back to the, the API figures. Not a bad reaction, actually. The API you can see here, uh, usually uh, not as big as, as this. You can see, we, I guess we started 48 down to uh, 85. Quick math, 60 ticks, which is a, a decent reaction. And you can see those numbers coming through there for uh, the API figures, all builds, all builds. Crude, uh, you know, a big switch from the, the drawdown of 1.8, expected to a three and a half million barrel uh, draw. After four, um, 
four straight days lower and of course the worst May in in, in recent times uh, managing to have a, an up day uh, yesterday but um, underpinned by raising trade tensions uh, the global economic picture has deteriorated these are the comments coming out overnight as well but this surprise build just weighing on, on, on price a touch obviously DOE's later today uh, will be the the main out well all things considered will be the main driver for where, where this market finishes uh, with the correlation of S&P and oil I guess you could argue a bit of a breakdown yesterday but at the same time the failure to to make a new low despite that bill could be telling could be telling maybe worth having this trend line drawn up today for for later on uh, as well uh, acted quite well yesterday the the trend line in, in a gauge of sentiment uh, you can see this one from the low through the effectively what were yesterday's lows that broke opportunity to get short and once we got above uh, as well to, to go long and those guides of sentiment are, are pretty key I mean just looking here at the uh, the S&P the comments yesterday from Powell about uh, a rate cut will completely split the market you'll have people saying uh, well if they can't even deal with rates at this well this market is incredibly over overbought still and we're going to come crashing down uh, massively you've got as well the the trade situation which isn't good you've got the idea that we're in a recession i know the stats over the weekend were that it's the longest the u.s hasn't been in a recession since 1900 potentially obviously data could prove that otherwise uh, but the recession fears the global trade fears the global slowdown or well this market's got to come down on the flip side where well, you've got lower rates for longer um potential of uh, you know another round of, of QE coming in where this market's got to go higher and higher I did see an interesting uh, article on, on Twitter on my way or was it uh, maybe last night having a look about the the impact historically of uh, lowering rates in a, in a rate cycle or pausing and the impact of the S&P and it's very much been an indicator that it's near the top the only you know point I would make is where well, the markets are different to what they were previously you know you didn't have the the whole aspects of QE and, and myself my personal opinion is well we're, we're going higher uh, whether it be from right now I mean from a personal point of view I'm slightly slightly annoyed we didn't get down to 2720 uh, and the fear is, is that was my entry should we have held I didn't have orders waiting there um, but it does look like we've uh, we pushed higher. But yeah, my, my personal view is we do continue to push on. Ever since coming into the markets in 2014, this market has just battled away the, you know, the China slowdown, Brexit, Trump, in a matter of days and, and pushed higher. And um, I think that's still going to be the case. But the idea of, of uh, the sentiment, whichever way you have this bias, where we're trading now, 2,800 uh, or just above, is, is absolutely massive for that. Let's remove the, the FIB here and you can see on the daily chart and this is the futures of course we're looking at but just the in terms of price action really really key uh, to, to keep an eye on here uh, and how we uh, act around that level just having a, a quick look over at the calendar for today I mentioned earlier it's, it's going to be an interesting one you can see all through the morning data out of Europe and the UK the services number at 9.30 uh, out of the UK obviously the one to, to primarily focus on making up three quarters uh, or near enough three quarters of the UK GDP number that's expected at 50.6 uh, slight beat or slight uh, increase of last months you can see we did have a, a number below 50 and we're flirting around that number for quite some time now yeah it'll be worth keeping an eye on because of short-term volatility but listen you've got the, the brexit scenario that's going to drive price i think we've seen a couple of times where all things considered the pound should have moved of these data releases only to flick lower or higher or even not do too much but data wise you can see will be uh, quite interesting to, to keep an eye on shortly got shortly I should say got the services number out of Spain in a couple of moments before it all comes out of Europe then relatively quiet uh, I would say from you know, give or take half 10 to to, to one o'clock European lunchtime as you'd expect so of course maybe that's when you just reanalyze the the markets but then we do have the ADP number quarter past one ahead of non-farm payrolls on Friday so good back end to the week here and then we've got the composite uh, final PMI the market composite 
PMI, the ISM non-manufacturing and the services numbers at 2.45 and 3 o'clock before the DOE numbers at half three. That alone would be enough to have people's interest, but we do as well have you know, quite a few speakers here. So it should be a, a good day uh, for, for the markets, either scheduled or non-scheduled data or speakers uh, as well uh, that I would want to uh, be on my toes for and ready to react. Uh, having a quick look over the markets at how we stand, obviously just going through eight o'clock. So we'll start off with the DAX here. You can bring this in. So it's continued its uh, its move to the downside. You've got an important level here of the overnight uh, low from quarter past seven UK time yesterday. So I'll be keeping a, a quote close eye on that. Breakthrough uh, to the downside early morning, you might see uh, US equities follow suit uh, as they're just finding support or have been finding support on the overnight uh, highs as well. The NASDAQ, what a recovery, what a recovery. Um, again, that overnight high just been tested now. So keeping an, an eye on the DAX going forward, uh, the dollar, I mean, it's pretty much exactly flat right now. Uh, so, you know, with data coming out, I'd wait, wait a bit just to, to get an idea what the euro against the dollar is certainly going to do. 9.30 for the pound. Obviously got a lot of speakers in the afternoon as well. Um, but just before we have a, a quick look over uh, some of the other charts, just with this euro, I think it's worth noting that, yes, we have had a, a strong recovery. But again, it's like looking at the stock market upside down in, in the fact that, you know, if we do get higher, or in, I should say the FANG stocks, if we do get higher, well, what a great opportunity to look to go short. And where could that be? 114 looks quite good. This whole area, certainly from a, a medium term trade, I think the overall the, the dollar is going to remain stronger than, say, the euro, all things considered. And this area between 114, 124 and the futures, I, I quite like. Uh, whether we could get that by the end of the week or not, I think remains to be seen. There's going to be a, a few twists and turns uh, yet. But now stocks is finding a, a bit of support. Bonds just coming off their highs. Uh, we did have a, a, a bit of a break above this trend channel in the Bund and T notes also followed suit. You can see here back up towards some of those highs from yesterday morning. But we're just retreating uh, a touch. Any questions as, uh, as usual, please uh, do get them in the chat or if you're watching on YouTube in the comment section. Uh, but I hope you all have a, a great trading day. It promises, at least on paper, to be a good one.